80. Nano Farad. And they also gave me that the frequency is 10 kilo hertz. So I'm given all this information. I'm given the frequency. If I'm given the frequency, that's indirectly telling me what omega is. Because omega is 2 pi times the frequency. So what's the question? It says, find VR and VC, those maximum of voltages. Okay. So um, what can I do to, uh, so, so find VR and VC. So for what would be the first thing we probably should do? Yes, so I know V naught. I want. I would like to know what I naught is because if I know I naught, I would multiply it by R to give me VR, right? Yeah. So I need to find I naught. So let's do that. So we've got um, we got V naught is ten, right? V naught is ten. I think it's uh, the maximum voltage ten. Yeah. Equals to I naught. I don't know what I naught is. So we need to figure it out. Square root of What's R squared? Or what is R? 150, so 150 to the power of 2 plus 1 over omega times C squared. So omega is 2 pi times the frequency. So omega is 2 pi times the frequency, which is uh, 10 kilohertz, right? Uh, 10 kilohertz means uh, 10 times 10 to the 3, which is 10 to the 4. So the frequency is 10 to the 4. And then times the capacitance. I'm doing this, omega C. So capacitance is 80, 80 nano? Yes, nano. So 80 times 10 to the minus nine. Is this correct or I'm missing something? Yeah. Yes, correct. Don't forget to say. So, well, do that and do this and then do 10 over that, and you will get. Uh, let's see, what do you get over there? Well, maybe it's worth, uh, maybe it's worth, yeah, let's do this because I might need that. So, I zero times the square root of uh, 150 squared plus. When you do this, you do one over and two pi times all that stuff, you end up with this. You end up with 199. Yeah, 199. You wanna take some time to do this one? One over this is 199. Okay, maybe we don't need to, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so, what? Well, 150 squared plus 199 squared, square root, and do 10 over that. And that gives you a current, I0, a maximum current of, of uh, 0 0.0401. 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 .0, yeah, 0.0401 ampere. That's the maximum current. Now let's figure out what the maximum voltage across the resistor is. VR will be what? What did we say? I IR. Or I zero times R, right? So you got 0 0.0401 times R. But what's R? 150. 150. So how much is this? About six mm -hmm. volts, yeah. Okay, and then VC. What should I do for VC? I naught times uh, omega C or one over omega C. So one over omega C, right? Omega C and R. So multiply. Okay. So I naught is point oh four oh one. And uh, what is omega C? Uh, or one over omega C is, I think, 199, right? One over omega C? Yeah, I mean, according to this, one over omega C is 199. So I would just put 199. 
and this gives the an A to the X, right? And here is the question. So the maximum voltage across the capacitor is what? Eight. The maximum voltage across the resistor is six. What's the sum of the two? 14. But the source is giving you only 10. Does it concern you that these two add up to more than 10? No. No. Why not? Because they're both at max. At max. Yeah. They're never the maximum at the same time. They are not maximum at the same time. There is a 90 degree angle between them. Yeah. Very good. Okay. okay. Yeah, the maximum voltage equals to the maximum current times something called the impedance. Yeah. So we're trying to kind of get Ohm's law, like make it work like the Ohm's law. All right, ready for inductors? Not too bad. Okay. So let's do the inductor. And uh, let me actually check if. Uh, Yeah, the next product asks about the inductor, so let's cover the inductor. So an inductor looks uh, like so. So inductor first. That's your voltage source. And you have your inductor. Now, the voltage is always uh, as usual, V equals to V naught, photon. Omega. So we use the loop rule, right? No. So what's the loop rule for this inductor? If someone need me to it. What do we say? Voltage from the source. Minus the inductance. Minus the inductance, okay. Uh, this is one by zero. Uh, the units won't matter though. Times the thinking current. Times the IDT. Yeah. Remember the for inductor you get the DIDT, right? This is to go in the direction of the current. So that's the equation that you would have. Okay, so let's uh, put the, for the voltage you got V naught cosine omega T equals to L times DI DT. That means DI DT is equal to uh, V naught over L times the cosine of omega T. Right? That's DI DT. Okay, so what's I? I therefore is equal to? What do you do? You need to integrate, yeah, to do that i. Derivative of i is that, so integrate. So when you integrate, what do you get? Sine. Sine omega t, uh-huh. And then bring it one over omega t. Yeah, you get v naught, and then you have one over omega l, right? Where does the omega come from? Well, you anticipate, when you take the derivative, the chain rule will give you an omega, so you have to divide by an omega. So that is that, yeah, yeah. So, What's the maximum current in this case? V naught over omega L. Yes. So this is I naught. Right? That's I naught. Okay? So here's what you have. You got I naught equals to V naught over omega L. I'm trying to get an Ohm's law out of this. So you got V naught equals to I naught times something that behaves like a resistor. What is that in this case? Just omega L. Just omega L. Yeah, just multiply both sides by omega L, and you will get that. Okay. So we get, yeah, 
get only here. Now, think about it. This makes sense. Uh, for the capacitor, if omega was very large, the capacitor, uh, the inductance, uh, the capacitive reactance was larger or smaller for the capacitor? The, this thing. Was it smaller or larger? <coughs> if omega is large. Smaller. Why? Well, the capacitor cannot resist uh, current if it's not, uh, if it didn't have a, uh, if it didn't have a chance to charge. If it's alternating very fast, the capacitor couldn't charge anything uh, at all. But for the inductor, it's the opposite. So this thing here, omega L, is called the inductive uh, reactor. So the inductor actually behaves opposite to the capacitor. If omega is large, the inductor is active. Remember how inductors work? They resist change. Inductors resist change. So if omega is high, XL would be high. Inductor will resist any, any changes. Okay. If omega is zero, meaning the current is not changing at all, then the inductor is not, it's like it's not even there. Does that make sense? Because the inductors, they resist change. Capacitors, if they have a, if it's not changing, it means they have enough time to charge. That's when they become bigger. They have more resistance. Okay? So, so is that okay? Uh, oh, uh, not quite done yet. I, I forget about this sine thing. Uh, we need to convert it into a cosine to figure out whether it lags or leaves. Um, so let's see. We got the current is uh, V naught over omega L, which I'm calling I naught, times the cosine of omega T minus pi over two. You can double check. Cosine of omega T minus pi over two is the same as the sine of omega. T. Use that sum of angles. So what do we conclude? The current lags behind the voltage or is ahead? Lags. It's what? Lags. Lags, because the angle for the current is always less than that uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the voltage, right? The vo let's say if the voltage is at omega t, where is the voltage? Yeah, if the voltage is at omega t, the current, the current's angle is omega t minus something. So the current is behind the voltage or the voltage is ahead of the current. So it's the opposite uh, to the capacitor, right? Opposite to the capacitor, yeah. Because there's not many voltage, like low voltage and inductor or resistor happening. No. Resistance doesn't lag. Capacitor is ahead, inductor is behind. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, since the capacitor and capacitor is behind by nine, uh, capacitor is ahead by ninety, and inductor is behind by ninety. What angle do they make with each other? Be one eighty. Yeah, be one eighty. We'll see in a moment. Okay. So let me go to the to the question here. Yeah. Okay. So question twenty five. Project 25 in uh, homework 15, right? Or what do I call it? Homework or? You called it homework 15. Chapter. I called it by chapter. Okay. Uh, chapter 32. Okay. So, um, what is this thing saying? Suppose uh, you have an inductor and is uh, connected to 15 hertz, 15 kilohertz oscillator. So let's say we have this circuit. Let's say you're given F is 15 kilohertz, meaning 15,000 hertz. So that's really indirectly given the omega, right? You multiply by two pi. Uh, you're given the peak current, um, I zero, the maximum burn. So the peak current is 65 milliamperes. And you're 
Um, so I didn't discuss the RMS voltage. So the maximum voltage is the square root of two times the V RMS. Uh, we discussed this in the And so the, essentially they're giving me that the voltage is uh, square root of two times the six. So that's it, we're given this, square root of two times six. Um, the question is, what's the value of the inductance? What's L? So suppose you're given the voltage, right? Square root of two times six is eight something. So the, volt the peak voltage is eight something. Maximum current is this, and uh, this is the frequency. So the question is, find L. Plan. Any relationship to the maximum voltage, maximum current, and L? Yeah. yeah. So right here. Yeah. <laughs> so we know that V naught is equal to I naught times omega times L, right? So you got V naught is the square root of 2 times 6. I naught is 65 <coughs> mA, so 65 times 10 to the minus 3. Omega is 2 pi times the frequency. The frequency is 15 kilohertz, so 15 times 10 to the 3 times the inductance. So you can find L. Okay, so you get, uh, yeah, so for that. So this side over there. According to the answer here, it's 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. And what are the units? Uh, and H. H and yeah. So I need to erase this now to get to the RLC circuit. So I need to erase. So give you a moment to How did you go find this chapter kind of okay? I know I'm not spending too much time on it, uh, but those are the highlights. <laughs> yeah, only a few pages long. Okay. Uh, so one more circuit, and we're done with this chapter. One more circuit. Uh, in the worksheet, I'm going to discuss in more detail about things that uh, didn't discuss in enough detail. So uh, did everybody get this one? Can I erase? No objection? Let's do that. that the current 
through the resistor, current through the inductor, current through the capacitor is the same, the same or different? The same. So we know that the current through the resistor must equal to the current through the inductor, must equal to the current through the through the, uh, the capacitor. Yeah. And we can simply qualify it. Okay? So let's draw the phase diagram here. Let's say the resistor, or let's say the current at a certain instant in time, right? The current at a certain instant in time is a certain time. That's the current. So this is the current. Now, the resistor, does the voltage of the resistor lag behind the current? Is ahead of the current or it's uh, it's with it? With it, right? There was no phase shift at all. So that means the voltage across the resistor is just whatever the current is at that instant times the resistance. So if you multiply a vector by a constant, right? In this case, the resistance, what do you get? You get a longer or a shorter vector, right? The point still in the same direction. For convenience, I would just draw a longer vector. It's visually, it just looks uh, a little bit more, it looks easier to view. So let's use a longer one this way. And this is the voltage across the resistor, right? Is this the magnitude of the voltage across the resistor or it's the voltage across the resistor at that particular instant? The voltage across the resistor at that instant. Yeah. If you multiply by cosine, that is the instantaneous oh. voltage. So this is actually the magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. So these arrows actually refer to magnitudes. That's why we're adding them as vectors. Next, let's say the, now the voltage across the current, uh, the capacitor, it's behind or ahead of the current? Mm -hmm. The current is ahead of the voltage. So the voltage is behind. behind so. Okay, <laughs> I know it's hard to keep track. One of them is ahead, the other one is behind. The inductor is uh, ahead, the other one is behind. So the voltage for the capacitor is uh, behind by, uh, by 90 degrees. So this is VC, right? The inductor is, the voltage is ahead of the current by 90 degrees. So it's, so the inductor is here. Let's draw it like this. The inductor. I'm purposely not drawing them the same size so they don't. Uh, you see, they make 180 right with each other, so they will partially cancel. Right? You can draw this one longer than this one, or this one longer than this one. They can cancel also. There is a special case where they cancel, but let's just say uh, it looks like this. So, what's the relationship between the total voltage? On the voltage, the voltage from the source, or the maximum voltage. What's the, the relationship between the maximum voltage, V naught, and these three voltages? Will you say it's just the sum of their absolute values? No, it's their vector sum. The sum of the vector. So how does it look like? Um, so we can, uh, uh, if I add this one to this one, so I'm really subtracting them, right? This minus this, right? Because they're, they're at 180. So what's the net result for these two when you add them? You will get something that points in this direction. Uh, maybe I should redraw. Here is my VR, right? So when I add these two, I will get something that may look like this, right? And what's the magnitude of this vector? VL minus VC. VL minus VC, thank you, minus VC. So I got this vector and this vector, now I add them. They're at 90 degrees, right? This is, a, even though it doesn't look quite like it's 90, but it's 90, okay? So add them, here we get, what is this now vector? The total. V naught. V naught, that is V naught, yeah. So, um, V naught. So how much is V naught? Well, you got this magnitude and this magnitude. 
So you square this, you square this, add them together, and you get d naught squared. So you have uh, d naught squared is equal to dr squared plus uh, dl minus dc to the power of c, right? So d naught squared. What is dr? It's i current times resistance, right? It's IR. The current, I don't need to say, use the symbol I sub R because it's the same current through all of it. So just I times the resistance. So IR squared plus, uh, let's see, forget. What's the voltage across the inductor? What did we say? What's the relationship between that and the, and the, Frequency or inductance. What was it called? Zero is very weak. Um, VL is negative pi. Uh huh, it's this one, yeah. and also what? The maximum voltage, or the voltage across the uh, inductor in this case, because it's only the inductor was connected to the source. So the voltage across the inductor is the maximum or the, yeah, the maximum current times omega L. Okay, that's the voltage across the inductor. So the I uh, times omega L squared minus, uh, no, not squared, uh, the square is outside. And then uh, for the capacitor, it's I over Omega C, this for the capacitor, uh, and this, yeah. Um, why would it be DL minus DC and not plus? Because if, uh, so uh, the magnitude is VL, and this magnitude is VC, right? Yeah. But they're opposite to each other. Oh, you just, have you, you don't care about the direction of the magnitude. Yeah, so when you add the two vectors that are opposite, you, you just have to subtract their magnitudes, right? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about direction and magnitude. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah Mike? Is the left side squared on This the... left side is squared, thank you. Yes, forget that. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, you factor the current, and then you square it, so you get an I squared. Here there is an I squared, and you factor that current out and then take the square root, so you end up with the following. V naught, now everything's going to be square root. You get the I, uh, or yeah, I through the circuit, and then uh, square root of uh, R squared plus omega L minus uh, one over omega C squared, I guess, right? Okay, so that's the current, or the, the relationship. This is called the, I mean, resistance is reserved for the, uh, a reserved word already for the resistor. So this is called the impedance. And it's given the symbol Z. What are the units for impedance? Ohms. It better be ohms, yeah. You got R squared, then you square root it, so it's, uh, yeah, hard to beat. Okay, um, let's do the next exercise. So we finish this uh, short homework. So the next exercise says, So now let me write rewrite 
this thing here. Here I'll do that. So uh, this z is equal to r squared plus omega l minus one over omega c squared squared. So there is a special frequency, special omega. Is it possible for these two to cancel? Can they equal add up to zero? This minus this, can they be zero? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So when do they cancel? Right? So suppose I want to cancel them. I would have this. Omega L. So that special omega, let's call it omega zero minus one over omega zero times c, and I would like that to be zero, right? So I get omega zero times l is equal to one over omega zero times c, cross multiply, and you would get omega zero squared equals to one over lc, and so omega zero is equal to one over the square root of l. Okay. This is called the resonance frequency. Or resonance frequency. So, so uh, wasn't this mentioned earlier in the earlier in inductor? When we did just uh, in a, it was when we had a capacitor and an inductor by themselves. Oh. And they were oscillating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it comes up again. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this resonance. This omega zero is called the resonance frequency. So the first question in this problem, they say find this resonance frequency. So part A, find uh, the resonance frequency. By the way, this is problem 33. Problem 33. 33 in uh, number 15, right? So let's go find the uh, omega zero, the resonance frequency. So, well, what do you do? You get omega zero is equal to one over the square root of LC, right? L in this case is one milli Henry, so 10 to the minus three, right? That's a milli Henry. And then the capacitor is one microfarad, which is 10 to the minus six square root. So that gives you an omega zero equals to what? Well, you have to do that, right? Uh, 10 to the minus nine, but one over, so. Uh, let's uh, see. According to this, I get 3.2 times 10 to the fourth. Uh, uh, let me write it here. So I get omega zero is uh, 3.2 times 10 to the fourth radians per second. So the frequency F zero is the omega zero divided by two pi. And so you divide this thing by two pi, right? You get this frequency. And if you divide by two pi, you get five times 10 to the three, approximately. <clears throat> so the question is, find VR and VC, the maximum voltage across the resistor, maximum voltage across the capacitor, at resonance. So can I erase that other board? So let me do that. Uh, so there's, yeah. I'm going to erase right here. Or maybe that. Still on the same problem, right? So they say, uh, find V R and VC at resonance, i.e. when omega is equal to omega zero. 
So let's look at z first. Z will equal to what? When omega equals to resonance, what is z? This becomes what? Zero. zero. Uh, omega L minus omega C is zero. Yeah. Zero squared is zero. So you just get R squared, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the square root of R? R. R. So at resonance, it's like the inductor and capacitor, uh, they have no impedance, right? They're not impeding it. So only the resistance, basically. So you get just R, yeah, at resonance. So let's find the current yeah. in the circuit, the maximum current. So V naught equals to I naught times Z, right? So I naught would equal to V naught over Z, which in this case Z is R. So V naught over R. Uh, do we have, what is V naught for this? 10. 10, yeah. And R is 10, right? So 10 over 10, we get 1 ampere, right? 1 ampere. So let us get VR. What's VR then? The I naught times R. So you get 1 times 10, and that's 10 volts, right? And then VC would be I naught times what? What's the reactance of a capacitor? Yes, one over omega c. For a capacitor, it's one over omega c. And so you get um, I naught times times that, and so you get uh, so I naught is one, and then uh, what is one over omega c? Well, we have omega, it's this, 3.2 times 10 to the four, and C is uh, 10 to the minus six, right? One microfarad. So omega times C, omega is 3.2 times 10 to the four. Capacitance is 10 to the minus six. And uh, if you do that, you get 32 volts. Yeah. Uh, you can also calculate VL, right? Yeah. What's that symbol next to the I naught and V naught equals I naught for the second line? At the, okay. Right below Z equals R. So this is this one. Oh, the Z? Yeah. So this one? No, the one above it. This one? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. That's also Z. The Z? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Z. <laughs> I always add a slash to my Z to make it different from a 2, I guess. Next is, uh, well, there is no next. This is, uh, yeah. Uh, this one is uh, the last one I meant for this. So, everybody familiar with uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers? No. 